Okay, so I guess we should just get started because it's already 10.02. And so it's going to be recorded anyway for those who don't watch it live. We can uh, send it to them and they'll have a link so they can watch the, uh, the broadcast. Uh, so let's get started. My name is Ismael Martinez. I work at SWTJC. I am the public relations slash social media spe specialist for SWTJC. Excuse me, that coffee coming up. So uh, today we have uh, Judy F. Gonzalez, who is the patient care technician coordinator for Southwest Texas Junior College. And also we have division chair, JJ Suarez. I was going to try and say your title, but I wasn't expecting you to be here, man. So that's why I, 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 didn't, I didn't really, you know, kind of prepare for you to be here, but always good to have you here. So uh, we'll go ahead and just get started. Uh, Judy Gonzalez has a presentation for the patient care technician program, which is uh, readily available at SWTJC on all three of our major campuses, Del Rio, Eco Pass, and Uvalde. Plus, she'll give you all the other information that you need to know. So at this point, I will give control over to uh, Judy. Oh, wait, wait, before we get started. Uh, so I do, uh, I want to uh, let everyone know that you're watching it live on YouTube, so you can send in your questions. If you have any questions during our uh, Q&A portion of the uh, broadcast or the webinar, uh, you can submit them on the live chat. In order for you to do that, you need to be logged into your YouTube account, and uh, then you can submit your questions there uh, on the live chat, which is right off to the side if you're watching on desktop or right below if you're watching on mobile. So, okay, with that being said, any questions, please through the live chat uh, portion of the uh, YouTube channel or YouTube interface, and we'll go ahead and just get started. Uh, and I believe you have control, uh, Judy, so you're able to share your screen if you if you like. I am, I am able to share my screen. So I'm just gonna say hello to everybody, welcome. I'm super excited to be sharing some information with you about our patient care technician program, especially in the current um, time that we have or experiencing all over the world with the COVID, um, pandemic going on. So um, I'll introduce again our our supervisor, uh, JJ Suarez, and I say supervisor, but he is actually the chair or head of the department um, and ask him if he has anything that he wanted to add into the. No, uh, well, good morning, everybody. And thank you all very much for being here. And um, just um, um, like Judy said, my name is JJ Suarez. I'm the division chair of Allied Health and Human Services. And uh, we're excited about the patient care technician program. Um, the only thing I do want to clarify, our patient care technician program is, is available at the nighttime in Del Rio. Um, that class runs from 5 to 9 p.m. In Uvalde, we have a day, uh, 8 to 12, and a 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And um, in Hondo, we will be starting it in the spring, and that will be um, during the day. Currently, we do not have um, the option in Eagle Pass, but that is something we're working for, towards next uh, academic year. Awesome. Well, thank you for the information. Again, um, if you guys have any questions, YouTube, uh, send them out there. We'll get them answered for you. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start my presentation um, for you guys. Let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm so sorry. I have a billion things open um, with you guys. So patient care technician program um, here in, again, Uvalde, um, two classes, Del Rio and Hondo. Um, so we're super excited to have been able to present this. This um, program has exceeded over the last few years. Um, we have been able to put it together um, and provide each community with much needed services. Um, we're excited to be able to continue to bring that and we hope to reach out and be able to continue um, to provide these options for um, students to grow in their careers. Um, so who are we designed for? We are designed for everyone. Um, our patient care technician program is designed for compassionate, friendly students who are ready to work, hands-on, um, nursing homes, dialysis clinics, home health laboratories, doctor's offices, um, hospitals. So our program is designed to give you certifications for a variety of areas to work. Um, and so that's also always an exciting thing, um, especially when you wanna move up and it, provides a ladder to move up in any of those fields. 
Um, we're going to go a little bit over the program certifications, what the course requirements are. I know we get a lot of questions on that. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the nurse aid program, the EKG technician program, uh, the phlebotomy technician program, and the medical technician um, medical assistant, I'm sorry, I should have put medical assistant on that one. And then we'll talk a little bit about admissions and give you some contact information. So our program certifications include um, five different areas um, of, again, Texas Certified Nursing Assistant is what we generally start our, our, our program off with. Um, we do have medical terminology and law and ethics that we start um, at the very beginning to bring you guys into um, the information that you will be needing for the entire uh, program certification. Um, after Texas Nursing Assistant, we move into the electrocardiograph technician. So once you finish that first portion of the Texas Nurse Assistant, you'll be eligible to sit for your exam. We'll go into cardi electrocardiograph or EKG technician. We'll move then from the EKG technician into the phlebotomy portion. Um, and all of those will fall into your certified clinical medical assistant. So the first three will give you more inf or, or, or information that's already um, that you'll relearn again in the certified clinical medical assistant. And then of course we finish it all with a grand uh, patient care technician level one certification. So that is what we are trying to um, reach for all of the students um, with, that with that patient care technician uh, certification, it gives you so much more opportunity to, um, to open up yourself to work in, in various fields. So what are our course requirements? We get a lot of questions on the course requirements. People email me um, or give me calls daily because they wanna know what they have to do um, to get into the course. So generally we ask everybody um, or they require everybody to hold a valid Texas driver's license or state ID issued by Texas. So a Texas issued ID card or a valid driver's license. We also ask for um, your social security card. So it needs to be an original um, that we get a lot of questions on that and it cannot be laminated. Um, for those of you that do have lamination on your social security cards, we're, we're, we ask that you order a different um, social security card. Um, those take a little bit of time to come in. We can sit you with the, um, the laminated one until you're able to receive your um, social security, your a, a new social security card. Um, and for those of you that didn't know, it is illegal uh, to laminate your card. I didn't know that. I laminated mine once and had to find out the hard way. But yes, um, social security card is required. Um, you have to take that social security card in with you to your testing sites um, when testing does begin and they do verify um, everything on there. So the next thing on the list is the name documented on Texas DL ID card must match valid social security card name and documentation and number. So your name that's listed on your Texas driver's license or ID has to be exactly how it reads on your um, social security card. If they don't match, then it's you're going to have some issues getting into testing and scheduling testing. So we take a copy of all of this in the beginning so that we're, we make sure how to um, that we make sure that everything is matched. Um, and that everything falls in, in um, the requirement uh, of being valid. Um, and so then you'll have the opportunity to go back and request um, either a name change or um, a new social security card. Um, the next thing on our list is evidence of required immunizations um, in writing required by the Texas Department of Health. So the Texas Department of Health requires us to have in writing your immunization record or um, information that you have received those um, immunizations. One of the major ones, of course, is gonna be the hepatitis B, um, just because we are dealing with patients hands-on. So we wanna make sure that we are not um, exposing them to anything or that we have proper care for ourselves. We don't wanna be exposed to anything that they may have. So um, it's a, a two-way factor um, for us. Um, you also have to have your meningitis vaccine, of course, for every college, um, you know, requires that, um, or acceptable titer levels. There's ways to um, get readings. If you are not sure that you've had these vaccines, um, just go to your physician and they can run titers um, to verify that that has been, um, that you do have, have had the vaccines. They will give you information to bring back to us um, reports in that sense. And then we need a TB skin test um, that is documented negative. You will have to have a TB skin test done. Um, it must be documented negative. 
However, if you do have a positive result, we do require a chest x-ray um, that reads that you currently have no active TB. Um, of course, TB is a thing that's been around for many, 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 many years. Um, generally in this area, it's not too high of a thing, but um, we, we, you will be exposed. Um, just because you're exposed doesn't mean you'll ever develop it or it will happen. It's just something that's in, in the body. So um, we do require that and um, you, it must be, if, if, you've, if you're bringing it in already to the program because you've had one, it has to be within the last 12 months. So um, if that, the next thing on our list, I'm sorry, is um, you must obtain a current basic life support uh, CPR card valid through the training period as well. Um, for those of you that are not um, able to obtain one, we will provide a CPR course during the program um, that you must attend and you must pass in order to continue. Um, if you have any questions, again, please just let me know. Uh, criminal background checks. Criminal background checks are another big thing. Um, we do require a criminal background check through the Texas Department of Public Safety, um, and that must be passed. Students with criminal convictions might not be eligible to test for state or national exam. Um, and if you will, um, if you have any questions in regards to maybe having something on your um, criminal background that you think may affect you, um, just check with me. There's ways for us to um, observe that, look at that. We can run the background check and let you know if you're valid or not valid. Um, it, and it, you know, it never hurts to double check. Um, the worst thing that we can tell you is, hey, I'm sorry, you're, you're not eligible. Um, best outcome, you're eligible. So um, don't, be, don't let that um, scare you from continuing with your career. Um, and then the last thing, I'm, please excuse the six, I'm sorry I didn't double check. Um, it just says students will be required to have their healthcare provider complete and sign a program health form, which will be provided on the first day of class. So we will give you forms that need to be signed um, for the criminal background check, um, for the TB skin test, um, and uh, release the health form um, that you'll have to submit back to us. We will provide these to you on the first day of class. Um, they'll be in your handbooks. Um, and you'll be able to return all of that stuff. We do have a timeline. So we just wanna make sure that you guys schedule appointments and get everything done. We generally give about a month. Um, that'll get, that will get you through the first medical terminology portion. Um, but the sooner you have that and the sooner you submit it, the sooner you'll be able to know that you'll continue with the, through the rest of the program with no issues. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Texas Certified Nurse Aid. We have, um, we have 108 total uh, required total hours. 60 of those hours are instructional. You must be present in class for at least 60 of the hours um, that are considered instructional hours. Um, you must be present in class. We have 48 clinical rotation hours um, that are scheduled at the nursing homes. Those dates will be set um, and you must be present for those hours. Um, we do, the state does require us to have and, and submit a daily sign-on record. So you will be signing on daily. You'll be listing the time you arrive. You'll also be listing the time you leave. Currently right now we have, um, there is a waiver given with the COVID status of, of, of the entire world. Um, we are, we will be doing all um, clinical rotations virtually. Um, you will be doing some skills lab um, work, uh, in, in, we'll have to bring you in. Of course, we'll follow all CDC guidelines and rules. Um, but Again, those everything you do is documented and we have to submit it. So you are required to do those hours. Um, after uh, demonstration and skills lab um, is done, that is to prepare you for your clinical rotations and also to prepare you for your state exam. Um, you'll then register with Pearson View to get set up for taking your exam. Okay. Then you'll go sit for your Texas state exam. Right now, um, our exam location is in Eagle Pass, Texas, so you will have to travel there for your exam. Um, there is a written portion and a skills portion, and you'll learn a ton more about that um, in the program. We moving, we'll move over to the EKG certification, um, which is next in our, in our program list. Um, we do have 64 class hours required. So you must be present and sitting for 64 of those hours um, in order to continue through the program, uh, for, through this portion of the program. Um, we'll also demonstrate skills lab. So you'll have to come in, um, demonstrate that you're understanding, able to place EKG, um, machine together and be able to process that and conduct an EKG on, on, on the person. Um, so they also um, do require that you run 10 live EKGs with instructor approval. 
So that is you performing a live EKG in front of the instructor on, uh, you'll have to have 10 different volunteers. So it'll be 10 different people. Um, generally the students like to do it on each other first and then they'll bring a family member in. Of course, everything will be again, followed by CDC guidelines given the current pandemic. Um, registration then will occur with um, National H, uh, the National Healthcare um, Association. Um, and then you guys will be um, transferred over into the testing portion. So it is a national exam, which means you'll have national certification. You can work anywhere in the nation with this, with this certification. Our next area um, is going to be the phlebotomy technician. Um, there is, again, 64 class hours required. You must be present in class. We will run um, a demonstrate skills in lab. You will learn how to appropriately um, puncture uh, someone. This is my favorite thing to teach. This is also my favorite thing to do. Uh, drawing blood technically is just what it is. Um, you'll learn the different areas where we have to do that, um, that, that, that are viable, um, and how to um, you know, put tubes in order and, and fun things um, that you'll get to demonstrate and do in the lab. Then we require 40 live punctures, again, approved by your instructor. So what that means is you come into class, you get to poke a bunch of people <laughs> and do a bunch of pokes. Now, of course, it's kind of uh, scary at first, but once you do your first couple of pokes, you get used to it and um, then, you know, it gets really exciting. And then after your 40 punctures, you're going to want to puncture 40 more people. So um, again, just it, it's, it's exciting and um, all those punctures though have to be approved because we have to make sure that you're doing it correct. After that, we go into registering again with the NHA for the phlebotomy portion and then you sit for your national certification exam. Again, this is a national certification, work anywhere in the nation with it. Oh, well, I'm sorry, half of my slide is missing here, but the next um, thing that we are talking about here is your um, clinical medical assistant. Um, the clinical medical assistant is one of the last portions of the, the program. Um, it is required for 160 class hours to be, you are required to be present for those hours. It seems like a lot, it's actually broken down into two sections. So if you cut that 160 in half, um, I believe one of those is 64 hours for one part, portion and then the clinical and hands portion is the 96 hours. So um, it looks it looks like a bunch of hours, but it, it works. We have it fit in and it flows appropriate. Um, you'll also have to demonstrate certain skills that you learn in the lab. Um, and then of course, register with NHA, national certification. You're able to work anywhere in the United States with that lab or with that certification. So this will bring you Obtained completion, ob obtained upon completion of the entire program with success in all courses and obtaining certification for each section, you will receive your level one certification and you'll be eligible for graduation. Super exciting. Um, this certification will bring you a ton of opportunity. Um, nurse aid, as a nurse aid, you can work on the floor um, in hospitals. Um, dealing, helping to assist patients who are there for surgery or illness or things like that. Um, you can work in the nursing home um, to assist patients there. You can work at a home for a home health agency and go into homes to assist um, patients at home. Um, with the EKG technician, of course, cardiology comes into that. You can work for a cardiologist office. Again, work at the hospital in the cardiology department. Um, so you have great opportunity to also move up with those, with, with those certifications into different levels of um, certification. Phlebotomy, um, there's many areas. There's private phlebotomy offices that people will go to to get drawn. Um, in the hospital, you can work there. You have the eligibility um, in phlebotomy to continue for certifications to get up into, um, you know, running uh, running um, the labs and and running um, the different kinds of, of you know urine samples and things, uh, fecal samples, things like that. So your opportunities to advance in each location are so grand with each of these. Again, medical assistant, you can um, hospitals. Um, uh, doctor's offices and things um, like that. So it's an exciting program. Um, it benefits our communities in whole because we are always, um, medical field is always short in every aspect of anything. So we just encourage all of you to apply. If you need more information, please ask more questions. Um, give me a call, let me know. Um, if you're worried about admissions into the program, 
southwesttexasjuniorcollege.edu, apply Texas. It'll walk you through the steps. If you look under um, uh, the heading of future student or students, um, apply Texas is there. We are financial aid eligible. Um, so you can apply for your financial aid through um, apply Texas as well. Um, then you can register for the classes. Um, once you register, I know um, we'll get you any information that you need. We do require a set of scrubs, at least one set of scrubs, because you are required to come in and scrubs to perform um, clinicals, to perform, um, you know, any observations or things that we'll be doing. Um, you know, sometimes we take um, our students into nursing homes, hospitals to give them tours and stuff. Right now, I know we're a little bit restricted on that, but, you know, um, we do require um, your scrubs. And so everything else as far as um, stethoscopes and um, auto all that stuff will be provided through the classroom. You're more than eligible to purchase your own if you want to, um, just in case anyone had any questions on that. Contact information. Again, my name is Judy. Um, so I'm, I'm Gonzalez. I've just been married, so I'm Estrada, so I've got to legally change all of that information. Um, I am an LVN PCT coordinator. Um, my number is there and my um, my email address is there for you guys. If you have any questions, please reach out to me um, and we'll get back with you with any information as 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 we go. Um, so I guess I'll check in with you, Mr. Ismail, to see if there's any questions on your end. Yeah, so currently there are no questions, but that is actually a good sign because we have plenty of, of uh, viewers, but we don't have any questions, which could mean also is that, you know, we have uh, given plenty of information for people to consume and obviously everything is <clears throat> self-explanatory or maybe straightforward. Uh, but I do, I would like to uh, just ask a few questions uh, just in general, because these are questions that I think some people might um, might have and just uh, don't want to ask them for whatever reason. But so one of the, what, what's, what is in your experience, what is, uh, what are the jobs that, that people can go and, and, and have once they get all these certifications? Um, so various, various, um, opportunities, um, if the, the, uh, um, so sorry, if they are looking for a phlebotomist out at the hospital, um, they are able to go in and apply for, for a phlebotomy position. Um, the, the cardiology, um, uh, clinics generally hire somebody to just run, um, EKG, Tech, uh, EKG readings for them, um, but also like in the ICU departments and stuff, they generally have somebody that's related to just telehealth. And so as an EKG technician, you can um, go into the um, hospital under the like telehealth area where they have the cardiology patients that are hooked up to EKG monitors. And your specific um, thing to do would be just to be reading those EKGs informing the doctor um, once, you know, if you're reading something that shouldn't be read um, or that could possibly be detrimental to the patient, um, or you can be the person in charge of just placing everything on them um, as far as the EKG goes. Um, so medical assistant, um, all doctor's offices hire medical assistants. You can go in um, and, and apply there. Um, the hospitals also do look for medical assistance as well. And given even the current pandemic we have going on, those um, authorities in charge of keeping up with tracing, tracings and stuff, they also have been looking for um, medical assistance to assist them with picking up the phone calling and you know getting tracing information or calling to check up on the patient, um, see if there's any um, things that they might need at home or uh, ask any questions that pertain to any of the medical field. So there's, there's just, just a broad um, opportunity for, for all of these certifications. Great, so um, one thing before, because oh, we're fixing to wrap it up here, we only uh, allotted 30 minutes for the uh, webinar, which I think is plenty of time and uh, we still, uh, have a few more minutes before we wrap that up. So I do, I do want to share some information about the uh, important dates that you need to know. So registration goes on through August 14th. That's early registration or regular registration as some people call it. But we have late registration that goes through uh, April, I mean, I'm sorry, August 25th. Uh, so that, that, so you still have plenty of time. Uh, the pay as you go, obviously, 
is a different uh, type of registration where when you register, you have to either make a payment or make some kind of payment arrangements for your classes and the classes that you've signed up for. Uh, so the beginning of classes begins, or the beginning of classes is August 24th. Um, financial aid, you can apply immediately. And also, of course, the Apply Texas is, is available at any time. So you can apply there and get those processes uh, started and get the uh, admissions process uh, going so you can be able to register for those classes. Uh, TSI, I do, I, I do need to know about TSI. So TSI, is this a TSI uh, required uh, program? Uh, um, no. no, it is not. I'll let Mr. Suarez answer on this and I'm sorry. Okay, I apologize, Judy. I didn't know if you had that. Um, no, it is a TSI waive because they're a level one certificate. So they do not need to meet the TSI requirements. I, I do also want to uh, uh, say that if uh, we do have students that are traveling in from out of town, like to go to Del Rio and to come to Uvalde um, and uh, you qualify for financial aid, you can also apply for Carl Perkins. Carl Perkins is also available for transportation. Uh, for, for reimbursement on, on mileage. Um, they also can help you with books and um, daycare if you need daycare, whenever our daycare is open. Um, but uh, you would need to apply for through the Carl Perkins, for the Carl, Carl Perkins grant. Okay, so uh, I think we're, we're pretty much wrapped up for today, uh, unless anybody else has anything else they'd like to share about the uh, patient care technician program. So uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was gonna, I asked the question then I was just gonna cut y'all off. So go ahead. If y'all have anything else y'all like to say before we wrap this up. Just super excited um, to be able to continue to offer this opportunity. Um, I love the medical field. I love what I do. And um, don't be afraid uh, if you don't, feel like you're good at one portion of this program, you still have all the other portions. So it's, it's an awesome program. Okay. So uh, we are going to have this webinar recording available to those who were not able to watch it, or if you want to rewatch it to get some more information, or uh, you want to share this with someone, we will have this. So if you signed up for the uh, PCT webinar, uh, viewing, uh, you will receive an email here shortly after with a link to the uh, webinar so you can rewatch it and uh, also share it with anyone. And we'll also be posting it on our social media platforms uh, here soon after the, uh, the webinar is uh, concluded. So uh, if y'all don't have anything else, I think we're just going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank y'all for joining us. I know it was uh, pretty quick and, uh, you know, fast and furious, as they say, but thank you. Appreciate it. We had uh, several viewers. So I think we got some good information out there. So uh, y'all have yourselves a uh, fantastic day and we'll be talking to you soon.